guys from Power In. I'm Carolyn Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So one thing that I didn't really learn in my nursing school was medical abbreviations that are commonly used by nurses and that nurses commonly see. So I think that a lot of nursing schools kind of just assume that you will learn this throughout your class and they assume that you will learn this on your clinicals. And for the most part, that's true. And you will definitely learn it on the job as a nurse because they're pretty easy to learn. But I do think that I would have benefited from, from knowing these abbreviations earlier on. So I wanted to share with you some of the commonly you know, used abbreviations that you would see on the job or in nursing school. I also put a link um, to a website below where you can see a very good comprehensive list of most of the abbreviations that you would see. But I just wanted to go over a few of them that you would see a lot. So I really hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that it enriches your life. Okay guys, so here we are with some commonly used abbreviations. These are medical abbreviations. And so I'm gonna kinda give you the frequently used, this list I think con um, contains about 200 of them, but I'm only gonna go through the top ones that I thought were one, you will see a lot, and two, kind of the most confusing. So, just to give you an idea of what to expect. So the first one that I wanna go through is AC. Oh well, we'll just leave it like that. Um, AC means before meals. Next one is ADLs. Now, ADLs means activities of daily living. This is really important because if you have a patient that has some kind of decline, you want to know what their activity, activities of daily living are and are they able to accomplish those by themselves or do they need some kind of assistance. For us nurses, it's pretty important to know this because when we're discharging a patient, we need to make sure that they're safe to go home. Another thing that you'll see a lot is ad lib. Now, a doctor will say the patient's activity is either bed rest, which is sometimes BR, or ad lib. And ad lib is basically means that they can do whatever they want. They can walk around, they can, you know, jump up and down, they can just do whatever they want. That's what ad lib means. Next one I'm gonna show you is A M A. A M A means against medical advice. Now, a lot of times you will have patients that will come in to get one or two things checked out. And a lot of patients, especially with chest pain, come in and they'll say, oh, I have chest pain, it just hurts a little bit. But any sort of chest pain could be a heart attack. So no doctor in their right mind is going to release this patient without saying that the patient needs to be admitted for 24 hours to rule out any heart attack. And the reason for the 24 hour admission is because we take blood samples and some tissue, heart, cardiac tissue does not show until 24 hours. So we have to kind of hold that patient for that amount of time to make sure there's not a heart attack. So let's just say they want to leave and the doctor can't say it's safe for them to go. So we would say against medical advice and we would encourage the patient to stay because the doctor is not saying that they can go. This one is BID. BID is simple, it means twice daily. That's it. So a doctor may say Colace 100 milligrams PO BID. We'll get to PO, but it means by mouth. But anyways, um, PO BID, which means twice daily. BP is pretty simple, it's blood pressure. BRP is bathroom privileges. Um, a lot of these are off of Latin, um, and so they don't really make sense in the English language and maybe not in any language that we commonly use. So that's why I kind of wanted to throw these foreign things at you that you will learn. Um, the BRP is bathroom privileges. DNR. DNR means do not resuscitate. Now, whenever a patient says that they want to, if their heart stops or if their lungs stop, they want to be left, they want to basically expire naturally, is kind of the way we think about it. Um, they do not want us to use what's called heroic methods of resuscitation. So if we have a patient that is not a DNR, so he's a full code is what we call it, then if we find that patient not breathing or without a pulse, then we are to use every method that we know how to use in order to revive this patient and we do the best we can. Now this is 
pretty traumatic. Um, you know, doing, doing CPR is quite traumatic. And a lot of times when the patient does come back, they're not back to their full mental and physical capacity. So many people choose to be DNR and they want to kind of let go and a lot of them say let go and let God, you know, just expire naturally. So we will, of course, we allow whatever they would like. And if that's the case, then they can sign a DNR with a physician. As the physician goes over the ramifications of signing that with them. G T T. Now this means drops G T T. Now I saw this a lot in nursing school, which is why I brought it up for you. I don't really see this on the job per se, but I would imagine this would become important if I were possibly going on a mission trip and maybe I didn't have um, a pump or the equipment that I normally use and I would have to calculate the drip factor. So that's when I would say it would probably be um, important. And that's why in nursing school you'll see it, but not really so much on the job. HX. HX is simply history. So if you wanna know the patient's past medical history or their family's past medical history, it's really important that um, we do know their histories so we can summarize it with that. I am, I am is intramuscular. So that's one that kind of makes sense to us. That's fun. IV also makes sense, which is intravenous. So you would you would give a medication um, via their IV. IVP is also simple. It's IV push. Running out of room here. Hold on. So we have N G. NG means nasal gastric. So if they're gonna have a NG tube placed, it's gonna go in their nasal septum or nasal um, space and go to their stomach. So it's what we call NG tube. NKA, you'll see probably quite a bit. I see this all the time. This we know as no known allergies. So NPO. Now, MPO is one of those Latin terms that doesn't make sense in English, but it means nothing by mouth. So I like to think about it as nada per oral. That's the way I like to remember that one. So it's kind of missing a little bit of mixing a little bit of Spanglish in there. <laughs> um, this one you see a lot. It's OOB. So especially if you're working on a surgical unit, um, those surgeons usually want their patients up and walking. So they will say out of bed, you know, twice daily, or out of bed to ambulate. And that's all it means, out of bed. So that's one that makes sense to us. This one you will see a lot. P E R R L A. I did that wrong. P E R R L A. We also know that as parallel. Right. Pupils equal round and reactive to light and accommodation. So when you have a patient that has a change in their neural status or whenever you're doing your daily assessment, you want to be assessing the pupils because your pupils should be equal and reactive to light. And when you put shine a flashlight into them, they should shrink um, on the same each side. And you should be able to kind of measure, like we have like little um, images that we measure it with and we just kind of guesstimate as best as possible. But what you're looking for is just the equalness and whether somebody is looking right at you into your eyes. And um, that's what we use to um, say that it was equal. PO, we kind of already learned MPO, but PO means um, by mouth. So I just say per oral to remember that one. PRN. This one does not make sense to me in English, but PRN, we always know means as needed. And physicians will always, well not always, but they will say this a lot. So they will say Percocet, one tablet, you know, Percocet 5, 325, one tablet every six hours as needed PRN pain. And they will say that word, PRN. You will hear that a lot in the hospital. So we will always have a lot of PRN medications available to us. So Q means every. Now, look at this. You can go Q, sorry, Q, day, or sorry, they usually put Q, D-A-I-L-Y. 
cue daily. So when you're receiving your patient and you're reviewing their medications, a lot of time their daily medications will be ordered like this, Q daily. So QID is every, I'm oh, sorry, four times a day. That's one that you just kind of have to remember. I don't know any tricks for that one. Let's see, SOB. SOB we use a lot because we get a lot of patients that are admitted for this, and this is shortness of breath. I ran out of room, hold on. STAT, I'm sure you've heard that before, but STAT means immediately, as soon as possible. Like this is your main priority at that time. So a doctor might order aspirin, you know, or let's, or he might order Lasix 20 milligrams IV STAT because Lasix takes a lot of the extra fluid from the lungs and it gets it out of the lungs. So this is a really important medication that we need to give ASAP because it's usually given for shortness of breath and the patient needs that right away. TID is just another one that I kind of just had to remember, but it's three times daily. TO is one that we use a lot and it's telephone order. So a lot of times what I will do is I will also add a V right here, T-O-V, telephone order verified. So if I'm taking an order from a physician and I have to write the order or I have to put the order into the computer, I'm basically saying that I received the order from the physician and I also verified that it was the right order. So what I will say is um, ordered T-O-V and then I'll put the doctor's name which is Mike. Smith, and then I'll put a slash and I'll put my name. And then our N next to it. So guys, I hope you liked that video. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know, write a comment just to say hi or let me know if you liked the video. So anyways, I cannot wait to see you guys soon. Bye.